you, it's Crazy Bianca Shabby. Hope you guys are having an amazing day. So today we're going to be doing a review. Now, it's been a while since we've done one. The last one I did was for Black Widow, and we're going to jump right into another Marvel film that I've had such high hopes for, which is Shang-Chi. And, oh, guys, finally I was able to watch it because being stuck in lockdown for three months does things to a woman. And, um, finally I was able to watch this film, and I haven't stopped watching it because... I, again, I had such high hopes for this film, and it literally, like, I, I had to bring it down a little, because I was like, you know, you don't want to, like, overdo the expectation and be like, like, what is it? Uh, disappointed. But this film really just broke everything. Like, they blew out all my expectations out of the park, and it was just such a beautiful film that shocked me in so many ways, and I'm so excited to delve into this and break it down for you, and why I enjoyed this film so much, and why it's become one of my favorite, probably my favorite Marvel film out of the entire MCU at the moment. So yeah, let's jump straight into it. But as usual, please remember to check out the rest of my channel. Remember to like, subscribe, and comment if you enjoyed this video, but also to keep up to date with all my other videos, including reactions, more reviews, and gameplay, and lots of other games that I get into. But anyway, let's jump straight into this. As an origin story, Shang-Chi really surprised me and really broke a lot of cliches that sort of came up throughout the movie, but just immediately broke them throughout the rest of the story and throughout the pacing and the different acts that there were for this film and just again really surprised me and compared to other origin stories like Black Panther, Captain America, um, Iron Man, this was really able to be a unique standalone film and shine on its own as an origin story and I'm so happy it did. We've seen a common theme throughout the Marvel films which is commonly family, but in this case we had family struggling through grief. Obviously the loss of Shang-Chi's mother and Wenwu's wife, uh, it was really painful to watch that whole sort of like that journey for every person in the family go through it and all the effects that sort of each person had um, and how they dealt with it in terms of their grief. And it was really well executed in that sort of way where every single person goes through it very differently and people don't really understand what sort of grief you're going through or how you're grieving for that person and I absolutely loved how they displayed that throughout the film. There's also the themes of revenge and whether it really is worth sort of seeking revenge and also uh, and also accepting all of your identity, including all the parts that you gained from your parents. And that is such a big topic to sort of tackle. And it's such an interesting theme and it's so relevant, I think, to everybody. Because at some point in our lives, we sort of question like, oh, I'm very much like my mom or I'm very much like my father. And it's just very interesting to see sort of that grow out and sort of explore that theme throughout the entire film. I think this was also done beautifully through character development and we got, again, we got to see that throughout the journey of the film for each character, um, not only for the family who is Shang-Chi, Wenwu, um, Sh Ling, and um, the mother, but even though the mother passes away, we get to see some of her story, but for the main three, but we also get to see this for Katie and many other characters, which I just really love. I think something that I really enjoyed about this film as well was just the rich culture that was shown throughout this film. Um, especially because, again, like we haven't seen a lot of Chinese or Asian culture throughout the rest of the MCU. So to have a film filled with the, the mythology of Chinese history or even just like the creatures that are from Chinese mythology, um, including the dragon and also those other creatures that were in the film. This also was in terms of the set design that was incredible and also the different locations and even the fashion or like the clothing that was used. But also the amount of just the Chinese language that was in this film. That really surprised me the most because obviously in Black Panther we do see them speaking in um, I think a mixture of Swahili and then I can't remember what else that they mixed with to make the Wakandan language but in this it was like wow there's a lot of Chinese like language throughout the film and I love that like I obviously like it's nice when people speak in English but that's something I really enjoyed because obviously especially between the family they're just speaking in Chinese and I found that very beautiful and just like, you know, it's like, it's sort of like falling to old habits with family, especially if you, you, you do speak another language with your family, so it's just so easy. But again, just, uh, the, the creatures in this film were so amazing to watch and just look at, and visually it was stunning. The Dweller was like, 
oh my god, that was so cool. Because in a way, I, I didn't think that we were going to see it. I thought maybe we would get a peek of it, but I thought they would obviously close the gate. But when it erupted out of the, the dragon scale gate, I was like, oh my god. Because it looked like something out of, out of a Cthulhu book. And it was so majestic and cool and terrifying and I loved it um and just yeah it just was so cool and even just the the Chinese dragon the water dragon was, and this great protector was so well visually designed and the sound production for both the creatures were just so good and just both of them visually stunning and I absolutely adored them in this film and I hope that with more sequels to Shang-Chi coming out I hope we get to see more creatures whether they're dragons or even more Chinese sort of creatures or even just other like some more dark creatures like the dwellers and the soul eaters I hope we get to see more of that because just all of that was so so completely different from what we had, I guess, with, in terms of, like, creatures in the MCU. It was very much, like, almost like a fantasy mythological sort of vibe to these creatures. So that's why I just loved it so much, and I hope we get more of that in the MCU. The music really shocked me for this particular film. Joel P. West really made a unique soundtrack for this film compared to a lot of other Marvel films that we've had in the past. It was very elegant and almost soothing and peaceful, like especially in the amidst the chaos of just hand-to-hand -hand combat or just any sort of combat, with it, whether it was between the creatures, whether it was between Shang-Chi and Wenwu, or just any point of the film, except for some parts. Obviously, there was like the building, building music, but there were some points where it was just so elegant and calming especially between Wenwu and his wife that was such a beautiful opening scene that was one of the best opening scenes I think we've had in the MCU and it was so well done and with the accompany of this music it really sort of like exuded that peacefulness and also the gentleness and even just like the elegance of Tai Chi which was what the wife was I'm I'm pretty sure that's what she was using in terms of fighting against Wenwu and also uh Shang-Chi later used Tai Chi against his father um and a mixture of other fighting abilities but it was just so beautiful and just so different and calming and just but it also was like creating an excitement within the audience me particularly I'm talking about me I'm not sure what other people felt but I don't know with the swelling of the music it wasn't like usual like the big like drums or anything like that um it was just more like Oh, like he's, like, I don't know, like, especially in that final fight, Act 3 is my favourite, but, like, in that final fight, when Shang-Chi's ready to sort of, like, use the rings against the Dweller, it was like, you're, you've sort of come to that point where you know as well, like, he knows who he is, he's accepted all the parts of him, his father and his mother, and for me, I was just like, oh my god, he's done it, he's, he's gonna do it! So for me, it was just, like, a great fulfilment. I think for us, seeing this character go through this journey and reach this point where he's accepted all of himself so that was just such a beautiful moment especially again through the music I don't know I have a great like affinity with music so like feeling it and watching it just really meant a lot and just was such a beautiful moment for me I loved that moment where he's just getting ready to reuse the rings so good I also really liked and appreciated the use of Chinese instruments much like Black Panther where they used a lot of African uh, instruments for the soundtrack um, and obviously got singers who were from Africa to obviously come in and do voice work on it but again like this is something I appreciate with Marvel they go the extra mile to make sure that they're really sticking to the roots of the film which is obviously the Asian culture Chinese culture more correctly and that's why I appreciated this soundtrack a lot and it's one of my favorite soundtracks it's just so it surprised me so much and just yeah it was so good now, as usual, we're going to jump into sort of looking at the actors and what I liked about their performances and also sort of like delving into their story throughout, obviously, the movie. So Ben Kingsley as Trevor. Now, this surprised me a lot because, again, like I tried to stay away from as much spoilers as possible when I was sort of when this movie came out because I knew it wasn't coming out on Disney Plus for a very long time. So I was like... <sighs> gotta wait and I gotta, gotta avoid everything. Like I had heard bits and pieces but I, I hadn't heard about a lot of the stuff so luckily I was sort of like in in the clear zone but um, I had heard whispers that Ben Kingsley might have been in it so I was like ah eh, whatever but when I saw him I was just like oh wow they actually got him back um, and I know a lot of people sort of connected him towards the one shot that they did which was All Hail the King um, but I haven't watched it. I just know that people were saying that he was killed in that but obviously explained in the movie 
he obviously wasn't. Um, he was obviously taken on by Wenwu and is <laughs> taken on by a jester. Um, and he obviously performs for everybody who's at the Ten Rings sort of like area. And so I found that just a little bit hilarious in a way. And I know a lot of people, after watching it, I went and sort of looked for people's comments about it. And a lot of people were sort of confused as to why he was there. But in a way, I sort of love how the movie sort of cemented that he was never the Mandarin, that he was an actor playing the Mandarin. And also because of the fact that, you know, the Mandarin is such a racist uh, and just stereotypical character that was created a long time ago that they're sort of trying to cement that Wenwu is the Mandarin, but is a very different and very much fleshed out version than the one that we had many years ago. And even just, the again, like it was very racially stereotypical of what, how they had written the Mandarin and obviously as the name as well was a very racist name so then they just decided to get rid of it which I sort of appreciate um instead of just taking you know the Mandarin they actually took the character and fleshed him out a lot more with Wenwu and we'll get into that because Tony Long is amazing but yeah we'll get into that later <laughs> but yeah again it was sort of like having Trevor there and even him saying like I found it like ridiculous in the end that you know I was pretending to be um of like a terrorist and it was so dumb that I even took on that job but at the same time it gave me like it like a way out into prison and obviously becoming clean and sober and all that stuff so in a way it was like a, a good story arc for him he was obviously explaining all that and even explaining like his love for being an actor like that's uh, I don't know why like I know a lot of people probably would have found that boring but I don't know I found that really beautiful that he was talking about it when he was in the car and he was like, you know, like I, I like I went to the cinemas with my mom and you know, she like she we were talking about acting and la 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 and that's how I got into it and it, I don't know, I just appreciated those little details of him sort of like going into storytelling and stuff like that. I, and also Ben Kingsley is just an incredible actor. He's so good. So yeah, I just appreciated seeing him on film as well. And in a way, the whole thing about him being captured by Wenwu and even just becoming a jester and also loving it. So like that was sort of cute. I really liked it because he was like, oh, I get to act and, you know, I get to do like, you know, Macbeth and Romeo and Juliet and all that stuff. Like that was something I just found like hilarious, but also just really cute because he got to do what he loved. So I was like, yeah, go for it, dude. Do what makes you happy. Now, Aquafina as Katie is next. And in all honesty, I really enjoyed her character. I won't lie that there is especially recently with a lot of Marvel sort of comedy, it's become very cringy and almost forceful in a way. Um, and that's something that's always worried me. Like, is that what's going to push me away from the Marvel films? I think because like, I think since Thor Ragnarok, like the comedy has gone like sub up a notch because obviously like that was such a good film. It was so different to what we've seen. It broke sort of like the formula of what a Marvel film is, but now that's sort of become the norm. So I was worried that sort of her com like I love Aquafina, but at the same time I thought like sort of like with the script and everything with Marvel, that sort of comedy was gonna be like eh, like a, a break a deal breaker for me. But in all honesty, it wasn't. I actually really enjoyed Aquafina's performance in this film, especially even with her sort of like comedy coming into play and using it as sort of like a deflection against her family, especially when asked about like sort of like her job and sort of where she's going in life and just, I loved it. Like that's something like I found really interesting. And that's something that also sort of connects to Shang-Chi, which I'll again get into later. But um, she also used her sort of her wit against people, sort of like, you know, especially if they questioned her, she'd use it against them. And <laughs> when she just started randomly singing against the, like, the, the fighter. And I just loved that moment. I thought it would be cringy, but it was just so good. And I loved the confusion on his face. He was like, what? Like, what are you doing? And then just immediately sort of went back into fighting. It was just such a good moment. Uh, and sort of, again, like, it sometimes breaks the tension, which is something you need sometimes. So I loved it. And I also love, I, I love the storyline that Katie had as well. Sort of like, because... I think that's something I'm going through at the moment where I'm sort of stuck in this place where I'm like, oh god, like, what do I do with my life? But you're also sort of staying in that sort of comfortable bubble of just, like, your, what you're good at. Um, so, like, I don't know, like, I, I don't know if a lot of people go through this, but I feel like everybody goes through, like, one phase of their life with, like, am I doing the right thing? Am I sort of, like, getting out of my comfort zone? Am I doing more or am I growing up? So it's, like, interesting to sort of, like, explore that in a film. We don't really get that a lot. Um, especially for sort of that age range, which is like mid 20s to 30s sort of range with these characters. So it was interesting to sort of see it play out for Katie. And even I love, <laughs> I love how she's ranting to the elderly woman in, um, 
Talal, and she's um, explaining to her and just being like, you know, like, I don't want to do anything, like, in terms of, like, oh, well, you know, I don't want to, like, do something that I know, like, I'm not going to be good at, and then put, like, you know, put all the effort and stuff into not improving and stuff, and then the old, older woman is just like, if you don't aim, you'll, if you never aim for something, you'll never, oh, what is it? <sighs> I think I wrote the line down. Did I write the light down? No, I didn't. The one line I didn't write. <laughs> I love what she said, the elderly, elderly woman. That was such a beautiful line. And it was just like, oh shit. Like, I remember sitting there like, oh god, like that, that's true. I love that, like, that saying. It's so good. And I love how they gave her that chance. Like, they let her, like, improve her skills and learn and sort of become better and better and better. And then she was the one eventually who hit the dollar, which was nice. I loved that moment for her. Um, and obviously it helped sort of stop the dragon from dying. So I was like, oh, thank the Lord, because I didn't want the dragon to die. And also one thing I really, really appreciate from Marvel is that they gave a platonic relationship between Katie and Shang-Chi. Because I was worried at so many points where there was going to be romance. And I was like, please, just no, because obviously, like, when, when in a lot of stories throughout Hollywood, or even just throughout a lot of film throughout the world, when a man and a woman is in a film, they just immediately fall in love. <laughs> so I'm just like, mm -mm. like, oh, like sometimes I just find it so annoying. But in this, it just shows how platonic they are, and how even if you're not in love, you can still care for that person and love them in a very platonic way. And so I just love the sort of like the the friendship between Shang-Chi and Katie and how they care for each other and they support each other. Now, Mengo Zhang as Xu Xiaoling. I loved her so much. I absolutely adored her character. She was such a badass and an absolute queen. Um, she just exuded such confidence and just, yeah, she was just such a great like person to watch as an actor on screen like she was just had this aura around her and she was just so good and I know that this was her first role as well and I was shocked I honestly thought like she had done either more Chinese sort of films or other films in the sort of American industry but this was her first role I was so shocked and just I feel like she's gonna have a big career ahead of her because so good but I was gonna say, the evolution of her character was so well done, especially for a female character. Um, I really appreciated the story that they gave her and how she evolved again throughout the film, because we see her from this very young, young child, um, becoming a young woman, and then leaving this sort of toxic environment with her father, but also leaving sort of behind a lot of the letdown she's had in her life, not only from her brother, but also her father, especially during a time of grief. So her brother left, her father technically abandoned her, wouldn't really like see to her as a daughter. Um, and she left and built an empire on her own. Especially my favorite line was, if my father wouldn't let me into his empire, I'll build my own. Like that was so amazing. Like I know a lot of people were probably like, oh my God, feminism. But like, that's such, like this character was so good and just, like so unique from other characters we've seen from the MCU, especially females, because she was in a very toxic environment where she wasn't allowed to grow, she wasn't allowed to become her own woman, and she herself took the initiative to leave and build something of her own. And this is such an inspiring character to all women, because it just shows that if you if if you focus on yourself for a period of time, you can become the best version of yourself. And we see that with her, like how she becomes this great leader of a ring, a uh, fight ring, and just like, be just becoming the leader of it. And just, you know, everyone respecting her and giving her like a lot of respect than her father or her brother would have done when th she was younger. So to see that when she's older and obviously seeing sort of like the flashbacks and what she goes through it's so beautiful to sort of see the culmination of that time and see what she becomes throughout the film it was just so well done in terms of character development <laughs> i also <laughs> i also saw someone just recently because i went because in uni I don't know why we we I'm doing it like a film unit one of my final units is a film unit and we had to sort of like break down a trailer and they gave us the Shang-Chi trailer which was really funny because the day before I had watched the film so in class we were watching it and then I was just going through the comments just while we while the teacher was talking and la 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 I was watch I was going scrolling through it and I saw some guy say Oh yeah, the movie was alright. I think it was a big letdown because of the woke feminism that was in the film. And in, a, in that moment I was like, 
but what's woke about it? I don't understand, because there's all these different internet terms that I just don't care about. And just in that moment, I was like, but what is so woke about it? What is so wrong with a woman taking control of her life, stepping out of an environment that isn't good for her, and becoming the best version of herself? I was like, I, my brain is just trying to figure out why you can't understand that, but oh well. <laughs> I also love the dynamic between her and Shang-Chi, especially <laughs> in that fight pit scene, was just so good. It's all like at times it almost felt like they were like two children just sort of having a go at each other, especially when they're both like on their backs, like fighting each other, and he goes to punch her, and then she just immediately like headbutts him and then punches him. It's just so good. Almost like a bit of pettiness to it, but also just like you can feel the amount of anger she has towards him leaving and never coming back. And even in that moment where she says like, you should never have come, and then she stops for a second, and then she turns around and just like hits him in the face like, so good. And I was like, you know what, Shang-Chi? You really deserve that. <laughs> in all honesty, you really did. But also, I just, I, like, again, going back to the relationship between her and Shang-Chi, you can see the amount of kindness and respect that they have for one another as brother and sister. And I think this is something that obviously they learnt from their mother and even their father, like to respect one another um, and have that sort of camaraderie in a way. Um, because she's very supportive of him and he's very supportive of her. Um, and we see that sort of grow throughout the film, especially post the fight pit, because obviously there is a bit of tension still there. But especially when they're in Talo, they they become like very close and you can see that you know they they're beginning to trust each other more and even when it's the final battle oh just i i'm gonna go into that a little bit more later but just like they they're supporting one another in that fight and they know the risks that are there so they they, they know each other can sort of take care of themselves but at the same time they want to make sure each other are like protected and safe so that was something like i loved between like showing you because you don't need to have someone say i love you or i care about you to show that they care it's more through the actions so that's something i appreciate with a lot of films where they don't have a lot of dialogue but more action so that was something i really enjoyed and you could just see it through their actions or even very few words and yeah that was great also something i didn't know and i i actually was like researching it as i was sort of writing my review but mayang is young I'm sorry if I'm saying that wrong. My apologies, but I'm trying. Um, she actually went to sort of like the director and even to Marvel and asked for a stick, like a, because they had originally, I didn't know this, but originally they had a streak of color through her hair. And, and this is something that is very racially stipped stereotypical in a lot of films including Asian characters where they have so the the rebellious character especially females have like a colored streak um through their hair but there's a lot of like Chinese films or even Asian films that has that sort of like stereotypical racial trait for women and even men but a lot of women um and so to see that she went to them and said, please remove this from the film. And I didn't know this, but they went and like removed it digitally throughout every single scene that she was in. Um, and I love how they broke sort of like that cliche of Asian women having that colored streak because it's very common. Um, and yeah, I just love that she was able to have an opinion and be like, yeah, no, I don't want this in the film. Please remove it. So yeah, that was just a great thing that I found out. Um, and just, yeah, it just shows that Marvel is also interested in what the actors have to say. So it was great. But again, I really enjoyed her character. She's amazing. And I cannot wait to see her throughout the rest of the Marvel universe. It's going to be Amazing. She's gonna be so cool. We're gonna talk about Michelle Yeoh's character and she was so good as Ying Nan in this film. She's always such a treasure to see in films. Like she's such an incredible actor and just yeah seeing her in this it was like yes! Like <laughs> I was hoping she was gonna be in this film and when I saw the casting I was like yes! Like thank the lord! Um, but yeah just her character though it was a small sort of role um especially only appearing in the in act two and towards the end of act three it was so nice to have such a a warm character like her in towards the end of the film because we've obviously had this interaction with the father a lot of darkness surrounding about shang chi's like past and also the fathers and even the sisters but like with with ying nan like she just brought such a warmth and kindness radiating across like around her immediately when she was on screen and like sort of saying hello to sha ling and also to shang chi um, I loved that because it just like I love how it was a reminder to them that 
family can be loving and supporting and kind to one another. And that aspect is something that they lost very early on in their childhood, obviously when their mother died because their father stopped being supportive of them. Um, and we see how she is a reminder of sort of their mother, but also, again, how family can be loving, supportive, encouraging. And we see that especially when she encourages Sha Ling to go and practice with the other group, but even just to practice on her own and, like, improve her skill and then going to Shang-Chi teaching him Tai Chi and also sort of the skill that his mother had but also even just talking to him about accepting his identity because throughout life you know we all have mentors of our own whether it's our parents aunties uncles even just teachers from high school and stuff who you sort of remain friends with for the rest of your life who have a big impact on your life and sh it shows like she is a big impact to both the children um and she sort of tells them you know be yourself and accept all parts of your identity whether you like it or not because you're gonna have both sides of your your parents inside of you and carrying that throughout your life do that it's just so nice and just it was great to have sort of like this woman sort of come in and teach them that you know it's okay to be vulnerable and to talk to me about those things and just like it just shows them that they have another family member to go to when they're in need of sort of like sort of counseling or like sort of like advice and stuff like that so that's what I loved about her and she was just great throughout the rest of the film so I absolutely loved her addition to the film and I hope we get to see her more if we get more Shang-Chi sequels which I'm guessing we will I hope we get to see her again now Tony Long as Shu Wenwu I've got to say is probably my favorite villain throughout the entire Marvel universe he was such a well-written character and also Tony Long just like one of the greatest actors out there in the world and I can't believe that this is actually his first English speaking role because I've seen so many films with him but then I just forgot that he just hasn't been in a film sort of like that's just you know not pure English but you know like more talking in the English language than it is Chinese and just he is just phenomenal he's one of those actors who's just his performance is timeless and just he has so much emotion behind everything he does and just every move as well so body language eye contact and just dialogue was just so well performed just he was amazing like i, I have high praise for him just because he was just so incredible throughout this whole film i also love how dedicated tony was to creating uh, Wenwu as a very unique and even just fleshed out character compared to obviously how he was written in the comics as the Mandarin. I love how just human he was. Like, it was, and even just to me, like, I don't think he was a villain. It was more a man blinded by his grief and wanting the one thing that he sort of gained at a time where he was most, uh, what's the word? selfish I guess and then you know he gained this beautiful loving woman into his life who gave him such beautiful children gave him such a like a, a peaceful calm life only for her to be ripped out by his past and then sort of to live with that guilt but also wanting to sort of um regain her back and just so selfishly like putting everything aside just to get her back including like the danger of like you know, being killed or just being attacked. He didn't care about any of that. He just wanted her back. And just, I don't know, it was just so beautifully written and just so well performed by Tony. It, of course, he's such an incredible fighter. Like, his, his like, skill in martial arts is just so incredible. Um, but just as an actor as well, like, I feel like this film really showed off his skill in terms of acting like all his films do but I don't know for me for this one it really showed a lot more I think everything that he sort of like gained throughout the years of his acting and then sort of coming to this role as a fatherly figure was just I don't know he was just so incredible in it that I just fell in love with um when we were and just like also just like just every time he was on screen I was just like laser beam focus on him just like oh my god like what's gonna happen next just because he was just so fantastic and just again not many actors can pull this off I've said this before but like the the amount of emotion he had in body language in even the very sometimes the very little dialogue that was in particular scenes you can feel the emotion and just every single emotion not like just sadness you can feel the desperation it's just so well done and just he he put a lot of work into making the characters feel real and just it's so well done and so well written as well by the writers fantastic job um but 
again, Tony performing it just made it ten times more incredible. And even again, like I talked about him being blinded by his grief, he's so blinded by it, even in the early years of his children, but even in the later years, he never saw the gifts that his wife left behind, which were his children. This beautiful, like, son and this beautiful daughter, both very skilled and, you know, obviously one learning in secret and the other for sort of forced into it. Well, not forced into it. Shang-Chi sort of agreed to it and obviously he, he did the, all the training and stuff. But he was so focused on his grief and his own turmoil that he'd never got to sort of see his children grow up properly or sort of like watch them grow into the fighters that they have become. And even just, he, I don't think he realizes it until the moment the dweller is released. And even in that moment where he's grabbed by it, also major spoilers is get again, like I said this like before, or like it's in the title, major spoilers for this whole review. I'm about to say a major spoiler. Hope you've left if you haven't seen the movie. Okay, I'm gonna talk about it. But when, He's in the arms of the Dweller and his soul's being ripped. And such an old soul as well. You see him just looking at his son and then it's like, oh, this was what was before me. And like, I think in that moment he only realises like the gift that he had in his life, which was his son and his daughter. And just, I think, yeah, again, that's why in that moment, in a moment to save his son, the one moment he could have done good, he saved his son and gave the rings to him so he could protect himself. And just, oh, it, I was sobbing. <laughs> I watched, I started watching it at midnight and I think it was like 3 a.m. by that time when it got to that point in the movie. And I was just like, ah, <laughs> just like sobbing. It was just so sad. And I was like, oh my God, my heart. It just, yeah, it was just such a good moment and just so beautifully filmed and just, yeah, it was just fantastic. I just, I can't get over Wenwu because he was just such a great character. And I am sad that we don't get to see him again. But at the same time, that moment of redemption just showed in that moment how much he loved his son and how much he wanted to protect him in that moment, which is something that was so beautiful and I appreciate. Um, I just wish we could have gotten more time with him because he was just such a great character. But again, Tony Long, fantastic job as Wenwu. I applaud you, sir. Thank you so much for giving us one of the best villains of the MCU. It's so heartbreaking because, especially when you find out that he's chasing something that's just ten times dangerous and something he doesn't understand, and you're just like, oh god, the moment when he finds out, like, what he's done, like, oh, just, like, especially when he's hitting the, the dragon scale door, oh, it was such a beautiful scene, but also I was like, the moment when that Dweller breaks out, he's going to regret it. And especially because, like, the Dweller comes out like this massive creature of darkness. And just, and then he's just looking. And then you can hear sort of, like, the little notes of sort of, like, the, the wife screaming in the background. Oh, my God. Like, that was so beautiful. And just, you see the horror in his face. Like, oh, God. What have I done? Just so good. Like, I can't stop talking about Wenru, so I'm going to stop because otherwise we're going to be here all day. <laughs> now, last but not least, Simu Liu as Shang-Chi. Now, oh my god, what a journey it has been for this man as Shang-Chi. Like, congratulations, dude. You did such a fantastic job. Shang-Chi is one of my favorite characters, so to see you play him and do it so beautifully, like, dude, congratulations. It was so well done. Um, it's... Again, like, this origin story is one of my favorites, especially because it broke a lot of cliches. Much like Wenwu, I love that Shang-Chi has so many layers to him. As Sean, he, like we, I said before, sort of touching on what I said before in the past, in Katie's section, um, how even Sean Shang-Chi um, uses his charisma and even, like, sort of the joking side of him to sort of, like, create a veil of mystery to him because it deflects a lot of his past with his charisma um, and is sort of avoiding sort of like the ultimate question of do I really know myself? Do I really know my whole identity? And you can sort of see that, like he's struggling with it. Even the moment he gets out of bed and you know, you see that postcard and he's, you can feel sort of like the emotion on him. Like he, you can feel sort of, not the anxiety, but you can feel like sort of like that heavy sigh and just like that emotion on him where he's just like, 
oh, like it's something of my past, throw it to the side, let's get on and put that mask on. Sort of like, I feel like a lot of people have done this in their life, where there's a moment in time where they put that mask on. But also he has a very emotional and vulnerable side to him throughout the whole film. And we see that when he's fighting, we see that when he's talking to Katie, when he's talking to his sister, and when he's talking to Ying Nan, his auntie. Um, we see that, and it's just so well done. And we just see sort of like the layers sort of peel back slowly, we see the vulnerability come out and you know he's really like sort of opening up and sort of realizing that he doesn't really know who he is because he's been running from his identity for so long and obviously one of my favorite things is that they broke the cliche of him running away and not doing the act but in reality he had killed his mother's killer now I was gonna say as well obviously when he was younger I don't think he really understood what he was signing up for when his dad asked for his help. But at the same time, Wen Wu knew exactly what he was doing because he was going to send his son to kill the mother's killer. And he did that, I think, Wen Wu blamed Shang Chi for the mother's death. Obviously, she he does say that um, in the third act of the film. Um, and just, it's so heartbreaking because it's like, dude, it wasn't his fault. What was he supposed to do? He was like a young child and just... Oh, it broke my heart. But at the same time, like, obviously he's blinded by grief. But even with Shang-Chi, you can, you can feel in a lot of moments where he feels responsible for his mother's death. And especially when we see sort of, like, the flashbacks and then it sort of comes back to him as an older man. And then he's sort of, like, you can see it. And just it was so well done in terms of acting, showing, like, the body language and sort of, like, that vulnerability that you don't see often in the MCU. And that's something I really appreciated in that performance, especially when he's sort of unveiling that he actually did kill the mother's killer, because I, I remember, like, thinking in that moment, like, oh, yeah, he feels a lot of guilt for it. But then immediately when he, like, says, like, I killed him, I was like, oh, damn! Like, I did not expect that at all and just I loved that like the how that broke the whole cliche of him sort of running away from something he didn't want to do um it just shows that he has a bit of a darker past than we expected and like especially when he was like I'm gonna kill my dad I was like oh god like and I feel like in that moment it hit as well and even in the moment where his father's like you are afraid of me it just shows that I feel like he is a little bit afraid of the father, but at the same time, I think all he wants and earns is for his father's respect and love. So I think through fighting him, he wanted to earn that. Not in terms of killing him, but maybe sort of showing that I am the fighter. Like, is this what you wanted? That Oh, that line is so well well delivered as well. Just like, is like this is what you made me into. Like, aren't you proud sort of thing? Like, I loved that moment. But again, you can see how much he yearns for his father's love. And just, ah, oh, it breaks my heart so many times in the film where he's sort of just looking at his dad and he's like, really? Like, really? I think, yeah, it's just such a beautiful moment. And like, different moments throughout the film where I just sat there just being like, I get it, like, that's all you want. You want the love and respect from your father. The same that you had from your mother. And just, it's so heartbreaking. And especially in the moment where, oh, the moment where he watched his dad die. Like, that really broke my heart. Because he's now seen his mother and father both die. And just, it's so heartbreaking. And just, and then that moment where Sha Ling nearly dies. And he selfishly, very much, it's a very different, like, stand to what I'm about to say. But... It's very much like almost like what Star-Lord did with Gamora. Like he was willing to let the Dweller suck out the ancient dragon's soul so that he could protect his sister and save her. Like, it's selfish, but I understand why. He doesn't want to watch another family member die because that will make him an orphan. And just, I can understand that. I probably would have done the same thing as well if it was my sister in the same position. Like, Oh, the heartbreak. And that's why in that moment I was like, I felt like a little bit like, like, what are you doing? Like, stop him. But then at the same time I was like, oh no, wait. Like, I don't want the sister to die either. So just, yeah, get, hold on to her. Do not let go. <laughs> but also, again, just the evolution of Shang-Chi. Not only in terms of the character, but even in his fighting ability. I love, again, like he comes to accept every part of himself, including his father, um... And then in that final, final battle, we see him sort of, like, use both his father's skills that he's been taught and the skills of his mother to outdo his father and gain the Ten Rings. Oh, that moment. Oh, dude, just to 
the use of the Ten Rings in this film was so good. Like, I loved that battle between um, Wenwu and Shang-Chi with the rings. And then, like, I love how, like, the, there's two different sort of elements at large, which is, like, lightning and fire. So, like, it, like when Shang-Chi is pulling and then, like, Wenwu is, like, trying to pull back the rings. It's, oh, such a beautiful moment. It was so good. And just... Yeah, it was just so beautiful, and, like, ha, oh, like, I can't even begin to just, like, talk about more of this film, because, like, I feel like I could sit here for, like, the whole entire day talking about it, but, like, just the evolution of the character, and especially, again, in that final moment with the Dweller, he uses Tai Chi with the rings, and then he's sort of, and he uses, I didn't realise this until I went back on my second watch, and he uses the move his father used on him on the dweller and I was like oh my god like oh just in that moment I was like oh god like my heart dude my heart can't take this it's just so good it just like everything together like the performance from Simu from the music from the fighting skill that was used in the scene just everything in that moment just really culminated that moment like showing the journey he's been on where he's like from the beginning where he struggled to sort of be Sean struggled to be Shang-Chi again and struggled to sort of accept he has to accept both his mother and father's parts of him that he has in him inside of him as his identity and then seeing all that sort of happen in one moment was just, oh is so good and just yeah it was such a good film and just yeah I really want a sequel to this film because it was so good and just so well done and just yeah I just I seriously cannot wait for more with Shang-Chi and with all these characters um apart from obviously the, the ones that aren't returning um but it's just so good and I cannot wait for this like for the sequel and for to see him in another like Avengers film. I think one thing I want to touch on in terms of uh the Ten Rings um I, I love the Ten Rings. The the abilities that they have in the comics is so good. And I think because there was a lot in this origin film, I was fine with not touching upon, like, the fact that every single ring has a different element and sort of, like, different usage. So I hope that in another film, whether it's a sequel or even the Avengers, that we get to see more of the elements at large in the rings. Because we did see it briefly, obviously, in terms of when we were using lightning in his rings versus Shang-Chi using fire. So I would hope to see that more in future films. So I would really like to see that and I hope that we do. So as a final sort of conclusion, as you guys already have heard, I absolutely adored this film and in all honesty, I found very little flaw in it. I know that the VFX weren't 100% um, at times, but at the same time, I, I, I always put that aside because I'm always there more for the story than anything else. And honestly, I have to say that this is a 10 out of 10. I loved this film so much and I've watched it now five times and it's honestly my favourite movie from the MCU so far. Um, that might change when Spider-Man comes out, um, depending, but we'll see. Um, but for now, it is definitely a 10 out of 10 for Shang-Chi. So good. Absolutely amazing. I absolutely adore this. So thank you guys so much for watching this. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Please give a like, subscribe, comment, and tell me your thoughts on Shang-Chi. I know this review is very late, but I wanted to give one anyway because I've been promising one. And... I promise that there is more to come in terms of reviews. I really want to go and see Dune, which means I have to go and see it in cinemas because HBO Max is not available here in Oz. So I have to go watch it in fil in, in cinemas, sorry. Um, which is which will be the first time I've gone to the cinemas in like two years. The last time I went to the cinema was The Joker, so gonna go and see Dune. <laughs> and I also have to go and see James Bond. I promised those two films ages ago and everybody's been asking for those reviews. So I promise... In time, in the next few weeks, I'm gonna go see them and I'm gonna review them. Just give me time. <laughs> but yeah, again, oh, like I could honestly talk about this film all day long, but we're gonna stop now because otherwise, whew, I could go on forever. <laughs> but again, thank you guys so much for watching this review and I'll see you guys in the next video. Case Mango out. <laughs>